start with Target, uh, the company coming out just a blockbuster quarter, as we have seen from so many folks in the retail space. Walmart kind of told us where this was headed yesterday. Target comp sales up some 22.9% in the first quarter. Um, store comps up 18%. Uh, when you look at a quarter like this from a Target, it, it to me shows a company that's not just growing along with the bull cycle, but is clearly gaining share, um, and I guess gaining share from uh, pretty much any other competitor out there. Yeah, another remarkable quarter out of Target. Almost hard to believe. This is almost a year of results or earnings days like this for Target. But to your point, Miles, uh, same-store sales up 22.9%, or, or as they would say, comparable sales up 22.9% uh, in the most recent quarter. Apparel sales up low 60%. Home sales up mid-30s percent. These are big eye-popping gains. And, and you're, to your point on, on market share, Target noting that it gained $1 billion in market share. Now, I've asked Target this before. Where are you gaining this market share from? They said pretty much everywhere. So it's likely grocery stores because of their expanded food assortment. It's likely department stores because the likes of Macy's are keeping inventory so low. You go to Target, you just get a better selection, and you can do your one-stop one shop, shopping. You know, I was on a media call, though, last night with uh, Target CEO Brian Cornell and CFO My Michael Fidelki, who we'll be talking to very shortly. And they're very bullish on the consumer. Uh, consumers are out there spending their stimulus checks, uh, and that might mean good things uh, for the second and third quarters in terms of sales, which they reflected in their guidance. You know, what stands out to me about Target in particular, and we just showed that uh, graphic a, a moment ago about the different categories and the increases they have had. You know, during the course of the pandemic, Target was increasing market share in grocery, right? But what really stands out is that apparel line to me. Um, apparel sales up 60%. The company has $10 billion private label brands. Uh, and, you know, its apparel business is just really strong, which is really interesting to me. So when you talk about it taking market share, you know, it's probably taking it also from places like Gap, right? It's not just the sort of mass market um, grocery stuff also that it that it's gaining share in. It's also in clothing, which is just an interesting phenomenon to me. All I have is that I got a couple of great fake plants at Target over the weekend. Um, yes. Went with Same the here. fake instead of the real because, you know, because they're, they're going to last through the cycle. All right, uh, let's go over to Lowe's. <laughs> Yesterday we saw those results at a Home Depot really blowing away expectations. Lowe's coming in once again, a beat on the top and the bottom line here. Uh, looking at a comp sales increase 25.9% comp sales for its U.S. home improvement business up some 24.4% in the quarter. Um, you know, Sazi, we continue to see commentary that the, the housing market is in sort of an odd space. Uh, mortgage applications have been under a little bit of pressure. We know there is just no inventory that is really out there. But clearly, we talked about, or you mentioned the stimulus impact on Target's quarter. Uh, clearly, with Lowe's and Home Depot, more of that DIY um, you know, customer, you're going to see some of that pass through as well. Uh, but, you know, stock under a little bit of pressure here this morning. Yeah, hard to figure this one out, why the stock is under pressure here in, in the pre-market miles. Perhaps uh, just it, it did well to a lesser extent uh, after the Home Depot results yesterday, which were also a blowout. But important to note with Lowe's, they're saying in their earnings release that their sales momentum continued into May. They are reiterating that they will repurchase $9 billion worth of their stock this year, one of the most aggressive stock buyback plans right now in retail. I wouldn't be surprised if, if investors come back to a stock like this off a, a knee-jerk reaction here in the markets, which, I, which is probably reflective of what we're seeing in the broader market today, more so than what Lowe's did in the quarter, which, again, looked pretty darn strong to me. Yeah, and a stock that, you know, as we can see here, uh, has had a, a better than better than the index performance so far uh, year to date, but has uh, kind of stalled out over the last month or so. We'll see if that chart can kind of repair itself here uh, coming off again, strong fundamental quarter from the company. Let's move it over to TJX, the company out uh, with its latest quarterly results. Uh, open only. I think this is a great, a great new spin on the comp sales genre. Open only comp store sales. So these are stores that were open during the quarter up some 16%, uh, but that is compared to the 2019 quarter. So TJX uses a 2022 fiscal year. So their first quarter of 2019, they see open only comp sales up some 16%. We see a beat on the top and the bottom line. Julie, it's been interesting to see the retailers, um, I think, do the thing that us in the media are, appreciate greatly, which is to just tell us what the comparison in over is over two years ago, because the numbers from last year are all kinds 
of messed up company with 129% increase on the top line compared to the same quarter last year. Right. And yet the stock is falling, which is a little bit confusing. I mean, TJX, what makes it somewhat unique is that it doesn't really have a big online business, right? Or at least was not as developed pre-pandemic. And so it didn't get the benefit as much as some other retailers might have from uh, pushing some of that traffic online. You know, there is sort of that, what the treasure hunt aspect, as they call it, for a store like TJX. I'm just looking at a note from our uh, our friend Simeon Siegel, an analyst over at BMO Capital Markets, who covers TJX. He called it a strong quarter as well. He said there were some worse than projected um, pressure from Europe and Canada, but that overall the company's top line still came and beat uh, estimates as well as margins coming in ahead of estimates. So we'll keep digging in here. Brian, I don't know if there's anything you see in these TJX numbers that's responsible for the, the dip that we're seeing in the shares. No, if anything, maybe just a little bit of gross margin pressure. But other than that, I mean, here's another company saying that their second quarter same open or their second quarter same store sales are, are tracking in line to what they just delivered in the first quarter. That is good. Lowe's noting the same thing. But look, Target uh, apparel sales up over 60 percent. You had Macy's strong yesterday. You had TJ Maxx out here. There is an apparel boom in this country. And we've been mentioning it for months. And now we're starting to see it absolutely play out. But worth noting here, too, here, guys, wow, just look at where a company like TJ Maxx came. At this point last year, they posted a quarter where their uh, Marshalls and TJ Maxx division lost $709 million in terms of operating profits this year with the stores back open and people getting back out there buying clothes, operating profits for the division, $824 million. It feels like yesterday we were just writing about store closures and these eye-popping losses. It's amazing to see how things are coming back here. Yeah, the only thing I mentioned just on the stock, um, TJX was probably the winner, the premier company in the retail space, along with Target, uh, in those years running up to the pandemic. This had been a winning story for some time. Um, I mean, this you go back five years, this was a $35 stock. So it's been a double over that period. Uh, you go back even further. I mean, this was a 20-something stock back in 2013. So it has had a strong run over time. Um, and, and I think probably probably doesn't have the kind of growth lever in terms of uh, pulling share from its competitors or, uh, you know, it doesn't have an activist in there as some of its peers do. It doesn't have that kind of same um, news story attached with it from a stock perspective that I think some of its peers might in this environment. But again, a uh, company under a little bit of stock, under a little bit of pressure this morning off about 2% amid a broader market sell.